everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into something foundational, welders, inspectors, and engineers alike. The microstructure, whether you're prepping for certification, working in the field, or just curious about how heat changes metal, this one's for you. What is microstructure? When we talk about microstructure and welding, we're referring to the physical structure of metal at the microscopic level. Grains, phases, and everything affected by heat. There are three basic microstructural zones in any weldment. The weld metal, the heat affected zone, or HAZ, and the base metal, weld metal. The weld metal is the area that was molten during welding. It's bounded by the fusion line. That's the max limit of melting. This zone usually has the coarsest grain structure because molten metal cools and solidifies in a unique pattern. You'll often see columnar grains or dendrites forming as the weld solidifies, similar to casting structures. Deoxidizers and scavengers are often added to the filler metal to help refine this grain structure, improving toughness and reducing the risk of cracking. The HAZ, or heat-affected zone, is the area right next to the weld that didn't melt but was changed by heat. This is where things get tricky. Depending on how hot it got and for how long, the microstructure can vary wildly. Breakdown. Closest to the weld, you'll get grain growth, not good for toughness. Farther out, you might see grain refinement, which is usually better. And in some spots, you'll get annealing, softened material. The HAZ is often the weakest link in a weld because it can become embrittled and prone to cracking. The key variables here are heat input, cooling rate, and the steel's chemical composition. Base metal. Finally, the base metal is the part of the joint that wasn't affected by heat at all. It retains its original microstructure, strength, and toughness as long as the heat from welding didn't creep too far. Why heat input matters. While you're reading through a WPS, have you ever wondered why they bother listing things like travel speed or voltage ranges? It's not just filler, it's there to control heat input. Travel speed, amps, volts, all of it affects how much heat is dumped into the metal, and that directly impacts the width and behavior of the HAZ. As we said before, the HAZ is where things get unpredictable. Closest to the weld, you get grain growth. A little farther out, maybe some grain refinement. Go out a bit more and you might see annealing, where the metal softens up. Too much heat equals big problems. In most cases, we're trying to keep the HAZ narrow. Why? Because a wider HAZ increases the risk of several failure modes. Brittleness, delayed cracking, and reduced toughness. This zone becomes a weak link if it's allowed to grow too large or cool too slowly. That's why the WPS is so specific about heat input. It's not just about passing code. It's about making a weld that lasts. So when you follow a WPS and stick to your heat input limits, travel speed, amperage, voltage, you're not just ticking boxes. You're protecting the microstructure, the toughness, and ultimately the strength of the weld. The goal isn't just fusion, it's control. And heat input is one of your most powerful tools to control what happens inside the metal. Why this matters. So why should you care? Because the extent of microstructural change affects everything. Strength, ductility, toughness, and crack resistance. The big four factors that influence microstructural change are 1. Maximum temperature during welding. 2. Time at that temperature. 3. Chemical composition of the base metal. 4. Cooling rate. More heat input or slow cooling equals bigger grain size. Bad news. Faster cooling usually gives finer grains, better for toughness. But go too fast and you risk hard, brittle structures. Trolling heat input, preheat, interpass temperature, and cooling rate, all of that isn't just procedure. It's science. And understanding how these zones behave gives you the power to produce better, stronger welds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you want more content like this. I'll also be breaking this video into some quick shorts if you want to share it or use it for review. Thanks for watching, and weld smart.